So thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Kim and I sell real estate here in the Okanagan. So today I wanted to tackle the latest government news release, which is David Eby's affordable housing plan proposes flipping tax and re legislation of secondary suites. So I'm the first to agree that bold new housing solutions are needed in our province. A comprehensive strategy that draws on all levels of government, including nonprofits and home builders to create more of an attainable home, uh, homes available for the range of incomes and backgrounds is definitely needed. It's really important to note that this is a campaign proposal. It's not legislation that has been approved. So now is your chance to review, stay informed, and then make a decision on whether it will help our housing issue here in this province. So let's get into it. David Eby just came out with his plan for this issue in his campaign to become the next premier of BC. However, before any of this can come, become a reality, Eby will need to convince the NDP members to make him the next leader of their party and the next premier. And the Liberals have a different opinion. Liberal finance critic Peter Millibar criticized the plan, saying it was heavy on taxes and low on details. He also noted that home zoning and decisions around secondary suites right now largely fall in the municipalities. So Millibar stated that you can't just unilaterally put in increased density without knowing what the city's services and infrastructure can handle. And that is a local conversation with each municipality. So here's the proposal. So the title is reducing the barriers to entry and delivery of attainable housing. Agreed. EB states that we are in a housing crisis and our laws should reflect that where they're preventing homes from being made available or resulting in lengthy or unhelpful approval processes, we need to change the game. Absolutely. So one of the points he has in here is that home builders in major urban centers will be allowed to replace a single family home with up to three units on the same footprint, as long as they are consistent with existing setbacks and height requirements. The province will engage cities to ensure that infrastructure can support this initiative. Another point is secondary suites will be made legal in every region of the province. Reforms to municipal approval processes outlined in the development approvals uh, review process report will be implemented urgently in partnerships with municipalities. Another one is provincial permitting for housing will be a one stop and simplified. So here's an interesting one. Strata restrictions on rentals will be removed in his proposal and stratas will be giving, uh, will be given the ability to appear easily at the residential tenancy branch to address any health or safety or quality of life issues caused by tenant behavior that are not addressed by the unit owner at the cost of the unit owner. He's also suggesting that the 19 plus age restrictions in some stratas will be abolished so that young families don't have to move out if they have a child. Strata restrictions for seniors only will remain in place to ensure that seniors have accessible retirement communities. So another one is municipalities housing need plans will be used to set minimum standards for housing delivery with municipalities exceeding targets rewarded with additional community amenity support and those failing to hit targets supported through provincial uh, intervention to meet growth demands short-term rentals for those of you thinking about short-term rentals or airbnb this proposal is about rental companies or short-term rental companies being required to provide cities and regions with information about unlicensed short-term rental units in their community, empowering them to balance the needs of accommodation for tourism and accommodation for residents that uh, works for their local needs. Another section of this report is called leveling the playing field. So EB suggests that big and small investors alike are using the housing shortage to make excessive profits through short-term flipping. 
Rapid home flipping, the process of buying a house and selling it with a within a short period of time for much more than it was originally paid for, has spurred this speculative demand and excessive price growth, uh, making homes more expensive for regular British Columbians. They want the investments to be long-term rental housing, but they don't want BC or British Columbians competing in the resale market with flippers. So they want to use the data collected on the real estate sales and returns to construct a flipping tax to discourage this kind of activity. So in my experience, most of the people that I've worked for, for finding a flipper house, um, are average people and they want to use their time, skills, and money in order to renovate a home. They want to fix items left unattended by a, the, a previous owner. They want to modernize the look, uh, replace major items like furnaces and roofs, therefore bringing the market value up. And, uh, the purpose is to resell it for a small profit. Now it's important to note that the last two years of uh, this massive property value increases due to COVID have impacted how much some people can make. However, this also isn't a normal market behavior. Another important note is that these homes that need a lot of work done are not desired by the average buyer. Many buyers I've worked with uh, don't want to do the renovations. They would rather find a home that is already completed and they're willing to pay uh, for that work already being done. So here's the proposed BC flipping tax. A flipping tax will apply on a sale of a residential property. The tax rate goes down to zero the longer the property is held. So the tax will be the highest for those who hold properties for the shortest period of time. And that phases out after and over two years. No details have been released as to how much this tax will be or how it will decrease over time. The proposed tax, however, will include exemptions for life circumstances due to, for example, death, employment loss, divorce, or disability. Builders will also be exempted to encourage housing construction. And because this is designed to discourage real estate speculation, any revenue will go back into building homes for British Columbians. Another important note that this is a campaign proposal, not legislation that has been approved. So please review the information, stay informed, and then make a decision on whether you feel it will help the housing issue here in this province. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, whether you think this will help the current housing issues here in BC, please go ahead and subscribe and click the like button for that YouTube algorithm and check out my video on moving to Kelowna before you go. And I'll see you again in the next few days. Thanks for watching.